Archaeologist Olivia Jackson enjoys venturing into caves and old ruin sites. She is fascinated about learning about historical mysteries and various cultures and civilizations. Her aim is to discover as many ruins and caves as she can around the globe after having been to several nations and visited a variety of locations. Olivia is given the chance to take part in an expedition with a group of other archaeologists and tour guides. They set out on a seven-day tour while in awe of the beautiful artwork and architecture. They take in the splendor of historic buildings while recording their findings. Olivia is particularly intrigued by the mysterious temples and secret lanes. All of them, even the risky or off-limits ones, intrigue her. The archaeologist made the decision to explore the neighborhood markets and go sightseeing on the fifth day of their visit, as opposed to going into the ruins. But Olivia only wants to focus on the ruins, not on anything else for that matter. She therefore makes the decision to separate from the group and enter a cave that is said to contain a secret relic. The depths of the cave are said to contain a valuable object, possibly an important symbol or treasure. Olivia makes the decision to explore the cave even though she is aware that the tales are bogus. Olivia fills her backpack with necessities like water, food, a torch, a camera and a map as she gets ready for her solo presentation. Wearing her hat, sunglasses and sturdy boots, she informs her colleagues that she plans to take a walk and will return shortly. She tells them to go to the market without her. She keeps her destination and intentions a secret, not wanting to disclose her quest. Following a trail that leads her to the cave's entrance, Olivia discovers a narrow opening partially concealed by vines. She pushes them aside and crawls inside. The interior is shrouded in darkness and humidity. Bats flutter overhead and spiders scuttle along the walls, causing a chill to run down her spine. Without submitting to fear, Olivia starts exploring the cave, marveling at the ancient paintings on the walls. Symbols and figures hint at a forgotten civilization. Olivia gets excited and she continues to carefully study the intricate details. To her disappointment, the path eventually leads to a dead end, a wall of rocks blocking her way. Olivia starts to withdraw as she hears a loud roar a few feet distant. Olivia turns to face the piercing yellow ease and is overcome by fear. A leon is in front of her. The lion seems aged and frail. Olivia understands that the lion has decided to keep its distance from the pride since it has become old and frail. She is aware that one mistake could result in her death. She turns to face the lion and begins to retreat. Just as she begins to believe that the lion won't harm her, she turns around and begins to flee. The leon suddenly attacks her from behind. With a sudden jolt of pain, she feels its sharp claws digging into her back. She cries in agony as blood flows from her wounds, staining her clothes and dripping onto the cave floor. With a surge of adrenaline, she musters the strength to fight back. She starts screaming, picks a rock and hits the lion on the head. The lion gets startled and steps back. She races for her life. All she can hear is her heart pounding, striving to outrun the dangerous predator. Her vision blurs and the world spins around her. She's immersed in a fog of fear and exhaustion. She knows her time is limited. If she stops, she'll never be able to get out. Gasping for breath and trembling with fear, Olivia collapses onto the ground outside the cave's entrance. Her wounds throb with pain. She's lost too much blood but is alive. She glances back and notices that the lion never followed her. Fortunately, another explorer soon found Olivia on the ground after a little period of time. The brave traveler promptly hurried to her side and called for immediate emergency assistance. As soon as possible, Olivia was rushed to the hospital, where she received the required medical attention for her wounds. The old paintings and drawings on the cave walls are beautiful, but Olivia, who is laying in a hospital bed, is also aware that she paid a steep price to see them. Olivia determined never to go into an unusual situation unprepared again. Story 2. Patrick Hall is a game warden working in a large African national park. As a game warden, Patrick is responsible for protecting wildlife, ensuring their safety and preserving their natural habitats. His love for the animal kingdom knows no bounds, and he devotes his life to this noble cause. He patrols the huge territory every day, keeping a close lookout for both poachers and the amazing species that live here.
Patrick is passionate about his work, defending wildlife and the environment from threats including poachers, hunters and other dangers. He is a courageous, caring and committed individual who has a great respect and admiration for the creatures he comes into contact with. As Patrick ventures deeper into the wilderness, he notices a magnificent lion entangled within the cruel grip of a poacher's snare. The snare is a wire loop attached to a tree or a stake and set to trap an animal by its neck or leg. It is a cruel and illegal device used by poachers to capture or kill animals for their fur, meat or body parts. It is a male lion with a dark mane and a muscular body. It looks majestic and powerful, but also wounded and helpless. Patrick's heart sinks at the sight, for he knows the imminent danger faced by the majestic lion and himself. He calls his colleague on the radio and asks him to send backup and a veterinarian as soon as possible. Patrick, who is unable to stand by as the animal suffers, is aware that the lion's life could be in danger if he waits for his colleagues. When the lion spots it, he is already on the verge of passing out, so he decides to risk everything to save the lion by himself. He approaches from a secure distance and parks his car. He is unflappable in his determination to free the lion as he dismantles the snare with his reefly and pliers. The lion roars in pain and relief as the pressure on its neck reduces. Patrick grinning. He puts the pliers down, takes the gun in his hand as protection and carefully backs away. Patrick thought he totally saved the lion's life, but now things have taken a wild turn. Instead of being grateful or friendly, the lion is straight up angry and scared. It feels threatened and cornered, not getting that Patrick was just trying to help. All it sees is an enemy or some intruder. The lion attacks him, it leaps up from the ground and charges at him with its powerful legs, sharp claws and fierce teeth. It roars with rage and pain as it closes the distance between them. Patrick reacts quickly. He raises his rifle again and fires at the lion's leg. He hopes to stop it or scare it away, but he misses. Even though the lion is hurt, it reaches him before he reloads or runs away. It knocks him down with his weight and pins him to the ground with its paws. It bites his shoulders with its jaws and shakes him like a ragdoll. Patrick screams in agony and fear as he feels the lion's teeth tearing his flesh and breaking his bones. He tries to fight back with his hands, feet and knife but it's useless he's no match for the lion's strength, speed and fury. Patrick believes he is going to pass away as he lies wounded and bruised on the ground. When his comrades arrive at the ideal moment, the lion is hit in the leg with a well-placed shot. The injured animal retreats while howling in anguish, letting Patrick get away. Both Patrick and the lion received medical attention right away and lived. Although Patrick regrets that the lion experienced additional harm as a result of his actions, he is adamant that what he did was required to protect the lion's life. This experience also made him aware of the fine line between his responsibility to preserve nature and his own life. Story 3 Jessica Parks is a young woman who adores her family and looks forward to going on adventures with them. They take a trip every year, perhaps skiing, hiking or camping. This year, their quest leads them deep into a sizable African national park, a place filled with rare creatures and stunning vistas. Jessica is very excited about this trip. She's always wanted to see Africa's wild animals and beautiful scenery. Upon arriving at the park, the park's family sets up their campsite at a safe distance from a lake. They assemble their tent, park their jeep and arrange their chairs and tables. They also have some food, water, clothes and equipment. They're well prepared and cautious. They know the park is home to many dangerous animals such as lions, elephants, rhinos and crocodiles. They abide by the park's policies and procedures and pay attention to the guidance of the rangers and guides. The advisors told them that they would be safe if they followed the rules. They spend the first day in the park where they may get up close and personal with several animals. They observed giraffes, monkeys, birds, antelopes, zebras and antelopes. They also notice some lions lounging in a tree. They are astounded and ecstatic to see these magnificent beasts. They record films and photos so they can share them with their loved ones. They had a lovely dinner when they get back to their camping in the evening. Over the fire, they cook some marshmallows while sharing stories and jokes. They laugh a lot and have a lot of fun since they are well fed. They retire early and get a peaceful night's rest in their tent. They're tired from the long day and look forward to another exciting day tomorrow.
Jessica wakes up in the middle of the night. She drank a lot of fluids during the day, so she needed to urinate. She feels shy and embarrassed to wake up someone else to go with her. She's also afraid of going out alone in the dark, and she knows there might be some animals lurking around. She hesitates, but then decides to go by herself, thinking it will be quick and easy. But this was a big mistake. As Jessica quietly slips out of the tent, her heart beats a little faster. She finds a spot behind a bush and quickly takes care of her needs. Everything seems fine until she turns around to head back to the tent. She realizes that she has lost her way. The campsite is nowhere in sight and panic starts to bubble up inside her. She tries to retrace her steps, hoping to find familiar landmarks. But the darkness makes everything look unfamiliar. No matter how hard she tries, she only goes in circles, feeling more lost with each passing moment. Tears start running down her face because she's alone. It would have been better if she was alone, but unfortunately she's not alone. She sees movement in the darkness. Then a huge muscular lion emerges from the shadows, drawn to the sound of her voice. Fear grips Jessica's heart as the lion charges towards her. She tries to run and fight back, but the lion is too strong and fast. With a roar that shakes her to her core, the lion pounces on her, its sharp claws and teeth tearing into her flesh. She screams in pain and terror, convinced that this is the end. But just when all hope seems lost, Jessica's cries reach the ears of her family, and everyone wakes up in shock. They rush to her aid. Armed with a gun, sticks and flares, they confront the lion, scaring it away. They assemble around Jessica and evaluate her wounds. Jessica is still alive, despite suffering from several wounds and pain. As fast as possible, her family gets her into their car after doing their best to respond to her injuries. They rush for the closest hospital in a race against time, hoping for her survival. The medical staff at the hospital jumps into action and begins working non-stop to save Jessica's life. Jessica underwent multiple surgeries, but with the help of her family's prayers and the medical staff's expert hands, she gradually made a full recovery. Jessica bears the physical and psychological scars of the assault. He has a little apartment in Dubai near the park where he likes to run in the morning. He enjoys both his career and his life. Every morning he gets up early, gets dressed in his tracksuit and heads to the local park for his morning workout. It's a calming and advantageous method to start the day. The park is filled with a calm atmosphere. The air is crisp and a gentle breeze rustles the leaves of the trees. He exchanges greetings with fellow joggers and walkers. However, if these people had watched the news before coming to the park for jogging, they wouldn't have come at all. Samir also starts noticing that there are fewer people than usual. Then someone in the park saw the news on their smartphone. It's a pet lion, whispered a woman, her voice trembling with anxiety. It escaped in the dead of night. Samir's heart skipped a beat. A pet lion? How could such a dangerous creature roam freely in their peaceful neighborhood? The local news reports confirmed the truth revealing that the lion had broken free from its captivity at the stroke of 3 a.m. The once welcoming park appeared to be a dangerous jungle, a scene of man versus beast combat. In a panic, individuals begin to dash home to escape coming into contact with the lion. Samir turns around and heads back to his flat after realizing how serious the situation is. And just when he was about to exit the park, a sharp rustle caught his attention knocking him to the ground with a resounding thud. Pain seared through his body as sharp claws tore into his flesh. He cried in anguish, the sound echoing through the park. In his moment of despair, Samir felt the jaws of the predator closing in, threatening to end his life. His desperate screams reached the ears of a group of brave individuals who were also retreating to their houses from the park. Their hearts raced with fear, adrenaline and determination as they rushed toward the sound of distress. Armed with makeshift weapons, they confronted the lion head-on. Their shouts and yells filled the air, blows rained down upon the lion, stones and sticks hitting its powerful form. With each strike, they aimed to weaken its hold on Samir and grant him a chance at survival. Every second felt like an eternity as Samir's life hung in the balance. His vision blurred, pain threatening to overwhelm him, but he clung to the hope that help was near. Finally, 
a well-placed blow struck the lion's vulnerable spot, causing it to loosen its grip. Crew members quickly pulled Samir away from the jaws of death in those few seconds. The startled lion ran away. Samir was wounded and abused as aid workers attempted to treat his wounds. After they were able to stop the bleeding, they promptly transported Samir to the hospital. Samir was taken right away to the emergency room in the hospital. He had numerous deep gashes that had hurt his body. Authorities deployed specialist teams, put up traps, and worked non-stop to find the elusive beast. As Samir lay in his hospital bed, his body healing but his mind burdened with the memory of the attack, he reflected on the lessons learned from his harrowing experience. The incident had shattered his sense of security. He realized the importance of staying informed and of the dangers that lurk even in the most familiar surroundings. He vowed to remain informed, heed the warnings and take necessary precautions to ensure his safety and those around him. Story 5 Construction worker Ethan White is employed on numerous rural projects. He's a tall and muscular man with blonde hair and blue eyes. He wears a hard hat, a safety vest and a pair of gloves. He's a hard-working and reliable person who takes pride in his job. He's worked on many construction projects such as bridges, dams, roads and tunnels. Ethan has witnessed the constant expansion of cities and the clearing of vast forest areas. He often thinks about the delicate balance between progress and the preservation of nature. Today he works on a rural road connecting two small towns. The road is widened and paved to improve the traffic and safety conditions. He knows that this road will increase the safety of travelers, but he doesn't know that he's putting his own life in danger. A hilly terrain covered with trees and plants is traversed by the route. The neighboring reserve is also home to a large number of animals in the area. The crew is busy working and the sound of their loud machines reverberates through the air, disturbing the tranquility of the formerly peaceful countryside. Unbeknownst to them, a majestic animal whose territory they have violated and disturbed. A lion is hidden in the nearby woods. The lion becomes alarmed by the disturbance and charges into battle. A mixture of anxiety and anger may be seen in its golden eyes. Because of its instinct, the lion feels compelled to protect its area from this alleged threat. It emerges from the woods and scans the area. Ethan is the first unfortunate person the lion sees. The lion stealthily starts walking towards Ethan, who's oblivious to the danger. Panic ignites within him as he notices movement in the bushes. The lion doesn't wait long and jumps out of the bushes running towards Ethan. Ethan's voice pierces the air in a desperate attempt to protect himself, a desperate cry for help. The lion's fierce claws slice through the air and reach Ethan's body. Pain sears through him as he instinctively fights back, wielding a nearby shovel as a feeble defense but the lion's strength and anger overpower his desperate attempts. The sound of Ethan's agonized scream reaches the ears of his crewmates, a jolt of terror racing through their veins. They abandon their tasks, rushing to his aid with fear and determination. Together, they start shouting at the lion and throwing stones. One of them goes near the lion and attacks it with a stick, but a feeble stick does not cause much harm to the thick skin of the lion. One of the crewmates climbs into the bulldozer and honks the loud horn. While a car horn might scare most of the animals away, but not the king of the jungle, it only grabs the lion's attention. The lion moves away from Ethan, and the other workers see this as an opportunity to rescue Ethan from the deadly claws of the predator. They vigorously start throwing stones at the lion, and it finally backs away. Ethan's bleeding limbs and ripped garments provide as evidence of the furious struggle that has just occurred. Although he is terrified, he feels relieved when he finds he is still alive. His crewmates quickly gather to support and comfort him. They make an urgent call for medical aid to ensure that Ethan's injuries get care as soon as possible. Urgently dispatched by an ambulance, he is taken to the nearby hospital. His arm is fractured, his legs are lacerated, and his body has deep claw marks. The doctors confirm that he will need time to recover and cannot work on projects for some time. The local authorities move quickly as word of the lion incident spreads. The building of the road has been temporarily put on hold while they look into the safety precautions for the local wildlife and personnel. The occurrence poses significant issues regarding how to balance habitat preservation and human development. Ethan is annoyed that he is unable to work for an extended period of time. 
but he recognizes that he and his crewmates are responsible for infiltrating the lion's area, and the lion was merely defending its residence. <laughs>